Hi guys, this is Anish from GameMediaLab.com. Welcome to my exciting world of live audio mixing. Today I will talk about a topic that is near and dear to my heart, and that is monitor mixing. Although I love shaping sound for audiences as a front of house engineer, the true testament of my speed and ability is doing a great job mixing monitors for an act on stage. In order to be fast and reliable, I had to develop a specific workflow that allows me to respond to any artist's demand at a moment's notice. So today I will share five tips for setting up a digital console for monitor mixing. Let's go! The first tip on the menu today is putting all of your sense into post fader mode. When you are mixing monitors from front of house, you have to set up your monitoring sense as pre-fader, so that your main mix fader movements do not influence the levels on stage. But when we have a digital console specifically assigned to mixing monitors, we don't have to adhere to that policy. So what I always do is set all of my buses to post-fader mode, and set all of my main mix faders to zero. This allows me to control the level of all sends on a particular channel with just one fader move, which can be extremely helpful when writing solos or responding to unexpected level changes on a particular input. It also works great when you are mixing monitors for several acts on the same stage, especially if you are doing that without a sound check. With this setup, you can also mix a band that you know well a bit more dynamically by adding or subtracting 1 or 2 dB on a particular channel to bring out the details of a mix in either wedges or earphones. Tip number two, set up a noise channel on your console. When you're dealing with a lot of monitor mixes, one of the most important things is to verify if your routing is set up correctly. Instead of trying to wait for a signal from the stage or using your talkback microphone for that purpose, Set up a channel with an internal pink noise generator running on it all the time. Then you can route that noise into any of the auxiliary sends to verify your routing or even potentially check for any issues with wedges or earphones. Once you get accustomed to listening to pink noise, it can also be a great tool to quickly spot any changes in the sound between various wedges on stage. And as an added benefit, you can use that channel as a signal generator for your measurement system, if you have one set up. Tip number three, set up a reference listening wedge. Whenever possible, try and set up a reference listening wedge at your monitor position, so you can quickly listen to whatever is going on in other people's monitors on stage. That will increase your accuracy when mixing and reduce the number of trips you have to make to a specific position on stage to listen to what's going on in a particular monitor mix. In terms of setting it up on a console, route the Q listening bus to feed your reference monitor. That way, you can listen to individual channels by pressing the pre fader listen button on a specific channel, or the entire monitor mix by pressing the after fader listen switch for that auxiliary send. I just want to point out that you have to be careful with the placement of this monitor. Aim your reference wedge away from both the audience area and the stage performance area. That way there is no chance of you influencing the front of house mix for certain audience members or influencing the monitor mix of a specific performer on stage. You should also have quick access to controlling the volume of that particular reference monitor. Most of digital consoles nowadays will provide you with the option of controlling the monitor level by either assigning it to the master fader, the phone's volume button, or a user-defined rotary knob on the console surface. Pick the option that works best for you. Tip number four, logically place and label your sends. When you're dealing with a large amount of auxiliary sends, it is crucial that you do not get lost in that maze. So develop a system that you will use constantly that makes sense to you in terms of translating the positions of monitors on stage to their fader assignments on the console. In my case, I would start with the downstage monitors 
assigning the first auxiliary send to the monitor closest to my position, then adding monitors for the upstage line of sight, finishing with the drums monitor send. By using this system all the time, I don't have to think about reaching for the right fader, it just happens automatically. If I'm dealing with an extreme amount of monitor sends or placements on stage which are out of the ordinary, I use some tape and a sharpie to mark out their positions and place that map in a visible place on the console. That way I can always double check if I'm adjusting the right monitor send. The fifth and the final tip that I want to include in this video is to always have a reverb send set up on your monitor mixing console. You might not always need it, but there will be instances where the artist will express a wish to have reverb added to their mix. If you have it already set up, that wish can be granted in a matter of seconds. If you don't have your console ready for that, it will take you quite a bit of time to set that up. And we all know that time is the most precious commodity when it comes to live sound mixing. This will be even more important if you are mixing monitors for users with in-ear monitoring systems, as those mixes tend to be really dry since the user is not getting the reverberation from the room. Being prepared for these requests is a sign of a well-planned monitor mixing session. There are a lot of different aspects of monitor mixing that we haven't touched upon in this video, but I wanted to share these five tips so that you can go and try them out in your workflow or at least consider their implementation when you are building your next monitor mixing session. That's all for today. See you in the next video. Mix great shows and take care. Bye.